Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about your course creation strategy for Google Classroom. Now creating courses is super easy. You just log into Classroom, click this plus button up at the top, and say create class. Easy enough. But there is a little bit of strategy that you want to think through before you begin uh, rapid fire uh, creating your courses. Um, how many courses should you create? What should you name your courses? Um, should you create a course for each semester, trimester, for the whole year? Um, elementary teachers, you're going to want to think about, do I create a course for each, each subject, for each class? There's a lot of strategy involved here. So let's walk through this um, one at a time. So first of all, how many courses should you create? Um, you should create a course for each section that you teach. The general rule of thumb is you want your Google Classroom roster to match your gradebook roster. Um, Google Classroom is not a gradebook, but it does have a spot for grades. We'll look at that in a later uh, video. Um, so you're going to need to transcribe your grades from Classroom to your gradebook, and you want those two rosters to match precisely. So even if, you, if you're a middle high school teacher, you teach two, three, four sections of the same class, you are absolutely going to create a separate section for each of those sections. So for me, I taught biology, so I would call um, a class um, ninth grade biology, 2018, 19, and then in the section, I would do first period or, you know, a first hour, however you want to specify it. Um, you'll notice when you look at your class cards, um, it's it shows you right below the name of the class, the section. That's really more for you than your students. You're going to have multiple classes, and so you want to be able to easily uh, tell them apart. So that's one of the big uh, first questions. Now let's get into a little more nuanced one, which is should you create one class for an entire school year or split it into semesters or trimesters? Um, this is really going to be your personal preference. Over the course of a long school year, Google Classroom can get a bit cluttered with a lot of assignments. Um, the new redesign through Classroom uh, does make that a little bit easier to manage, but even so, if you plan on using Google Classroom a lot, like on a daily, even multiple times per day, um, you may want to consider creating a course for semester one and then closing that down and creating a new course for semester two. Um, if you have a lot of students who switch hours um, at the semester break, that would be another reason to split a year-long class into two separate courses. If you teach in trimester um, uh, situation, the same thing would be a, would apply. It all depends on how much you're going to be using Classroom. If you use it a lot, it might be beneficial. Um, it is a little bit more work initially to set it up, but in the long run, I think it'll be better for you and your students. Um, the same thing kind of applies to elementary teachers. If you're in a self-contained class, um, you might want to consider, if you're going to use Classroom a lot, creating a separate class for each of the subject areas. So you'd create, um, let me go in here, create a class for, you know, Mrs. Jones Math. Um, and then one for English, and then one for science, and, and so on. That's one option. If you're not going to use Classroom for everything every day, then you can probably get away with just creating one class, you know, Mrs. Jones, and um, you can use the topic feature that we'll look at later um, to divide up your subjects um, and make them easier for students to, to find and navigate. A um, couple of strategies uh, related there. Um, naming your course is important, um, mostly for your own benefit, because you're going to be, you know, using Classroom year after year after year. You never reuse a course. So if you have courses in there from last year, resist the temptation being, oh, just put my new students into that course and reuse it. Don't do that. It's going to be very confusing. You're going to create a new class every year, but you're going to be able to reuse content from your old courses. To reuse content effectively, you really have to be able to identify which course that lesson is in. And so if you just call your class biology every year, that's going to get really confusing over time. So I would recommend, you know, putting in the grade level, so ninth grade, biology, 
and then the the year, semester, trimester, however you want to specify it. So I might just say 2018-19, um, something um, along those lines. That's very important because they're gonna have there's gonna be a folder in Google Drive with that same name. Your calendar, everything's going to have that name, which will make it much easier to differentiate it. Once you've taught, you know, three, four, five versions of that class, um, you'll you'll be able to tell them apart. Um, this section or subject uh, thing down here, I really have no idea what it does. Um, you can use it, but I, that information doesn't seem to go anywhere. It doesn't uh, do much. Um, so I just usually leave it blank. Um, don't worry about it uh, too much.